Back in the 1960s, preservation was spreading across the entirety of Britain's rail network. Steam engines were being scrapped all over the country, but there were those who are willing to save them. Others would just be repairing or restoring old lines that had been forgotten about or had recently been closed by the Beaching Act. There was once a man known as Johnny H. Russell, who used to work for a global company in his early 20s. But eventually he grew tired of his job and wanted to live his lifelong dream of owning his own railway. He had always been fascinated by the railways, and always dreamt of having one of his own. And he was able to purchase a good section of line, but it wasn't enough. He wanted to expand his railway and make it as if it was a proper business. With some persuasion from the railway board, he managed to get a whole section of railway lines that ran from Scotland to a connection at Barrow and Furness in England. And the company was known as the Great Scottish Railway. By 1967, the Great Scottish Railway was the second biggest steam railway in the country. Of course, nobody knew better than us engines, who had all been preserved in one way or another, and did our best to do our work, just like we'd all done before. There are eight of us at this time. There was me, the first ever purchased engine on the line. There's William, our main express engine. He may not have been the brightest engine to come out of the workshops, and to be gullible, but he is a hard worker and does his work with no trouble at all. Most of the time. We also have a heavy goods engine. Malcolm. Here we go! Here we go! Look sharp, you lot! Come along! Come along! He is sort of a perfectionist when it comes to his work, but he is a valiant worker nonetheless. That right there is Alexis. Being built back in 1956, she was the youngest of the fleet, and she had a tendency of having a bit of a temper when things didn't go her way. Oh, finally! That felt like forever! Blasted guard! Any longer and we would have been late waiting for that moron! We also have two pannier tank engines. 
Victoria, who runs her own branch line that runs by one of the many rivers connecting to the River Clyde. And then there's our older but quite cockier brother Charles, our station pilot at the big station. And finally, Iviana Rose and Liliana Eleonora. Ivy and Lily for short. Together, we are a great crew, striving to show the world the beauty that is preservation in full swing. Whilst we were proud of our work, however, there were some times where old conflicts of the past can still occur. Wow, it's truly amazing. Every day it's always something new with you, Malcolm. Today I got to see you as a big sack of coal on wheels. <laughs> if you've been shifting gold since the letter I got this morning, you'd be dirty. Huh, that will never happen. I'm an express engine, Malcolm. I am designed for heavy passenger duties and only passenger duties. Not smelly goods trains. Despite the fact that many of your siblings started out with goods trains during the days of the Big Four and during the early days of BR. That's different. There wasn't even a challenge for us back then. Besides, it doesn't dig. A digny diggy. Dingy fried? No, that's not it. Um. Dignified, Willy. Dignified to let an important engine like me pull smelly trucks. You've been talking to James again, haven't you? Uh, maybe? <sighs> God, will it make you such a bloody gullible? <clears throat> okay, well, listen. If you say you can manage goods as well as you say you can, how about I propose we swap jobs for a day? I'll take your passenger duties and you'll take me goods. Unless you're too... Dignified for the task. Huh, too easy. I'll show you I can handle trucks. Just you wait and see. Oh, trust me, old pal. You'll wish you never took on this bet. In hindsight, William and Malcolm should have handled the situation a bit more better. But by the following morning, the plan was put into action. Good luck today, Will. May the best engine win. Don't say I didn't warn you. Ho ho! Well, you must be careful yourself. One wrong move and you'll hear the passengers complain for the whole journey. Knowing you rocking and rolling. Ha! We'll see about that. Are you sure you should be doing this, William? I don't recall you ever pulling trucks since being preserved here. I need to show that good for nothing Black Five that I too can handle goods, Alexis. Just watch me, I'll handle those silly trucks with my style and, uh... Gravy? Grace, William. Style and grace. Yeah, that's it. You just wait and see, I'll manage just fine. Trouble. That's what's going on, Sans. Trouble.
Sharp, I want no nonsense from you, hoarded lot. I want to show that Malcolm that I can manage you guys just as well as he can. So do keep in line, please. Thank you. Who does he think he is? We want Malcolm, not this big watermelon. William has no right to poke his funnel in here and push us around. The trucks were soon hatching a plan to give William a warm reception. But William, of course, didn't know it was a thing. Does it? Nice and easy now. Ha! Good luck with those trucks, William. One wrong move and they'll pay you out. Trouble? Nonsense. I've got them all under control. Whoa, whoa. What happened? Oh, blast. The trucks have slipped their brakes on. We'll have to manually release them before continuing on our way. <laughs> oh, how the mighty has fallen. <laughs> oh! uh, oops. <laughs> now look who's the disgraceful one. Thank <laughs> 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 uh, the galloping sausage which you him that one correctly. <laughs> <laughs> now to give credit where it's due. William did manage the trucks pretty well, for the most part. Huh, this is too easy. I have no idea what Malcolm was on about. I have proved I can manage trucks all on my own with no trouble at all. <laughs> Unfortunately, William was so busy thinking to himself that he wasn't checking the line ahead. Whoa, stop, old boy! We've jumped the red signal! What? No, 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 get no, on, get on, get on. Stop! Stop! Horrors! Blistering bike pipes! Phew! That was lucky! What are you playing at, William? Didn't you notice the red signal? Um, 
Oh. Right. You better head back down to the last station and alert the station master what happened. One of the Express's regular stops was at the junction towards Victoria's branch line. William always knew to stop here, but Malcolm was so confident he was handling the Express well, that he completely forgot about this. Malcolm, watch out! Hey. Oh, great Stanniers! was a close one. Malcolm, you silly engine. You've overshot the platform. Huh? Oh, uh... Oops. Finally, you decided to arrive at last! Fifteen minutes late. Dear, oh dear, me. So much for trying to prove that preservation works well as a railway. <laughs> That's enough out of you, dirty diesel. Be off with you, or you'll find yourself in a nearby ditch. Uh, thank you, Gordon. No problem, William, my fellow cousin. But I must ask, what are you doing here pulling trucks? Well, me and Malcolm made a deal if I can handle trucks just as well as coaches. But it seems it hasn't gone so well. Hmm, I see. But you have proven a point, though. Huh? What's that? That trucks aren't as easy as coaches are. They are silly, noisy things who always play tricks on other engines who are not so experienced with them. I learned that the hard way myself. My point is that you shouldn't let your pride get the better of you over hard work. All that matters is being a really useful engine.
Hello, Malcolm. I'm gonna have to give you credit, dude. Making a satisfying ride for the passengers. And the trucks are a bit of a handful to control. I'm sorry about all I said yesterday. It was silly of me, and foolish too, and I do apologize. I guess I'm sorry too. As much as it's been nice to try new things, I think I'd rather stick to my goods from now on. <laughs> oh, yeah. And by the next morning, the two engines were back to their regular jobs. They may still argue at times, but that's just how their friendship works, as it all gets sorted out in the end. But they never bring up the subject of switching jobs again, as they do not want to repeat the same thing twice. As for William, he learned that A, he shouldn't be listening to James, but also, whilst it is nice to try something new, sometimes it's best to stick to what you're good at. And I think he certainly learned a very valuable lesson indeed. Goods trains are a vital part of any railway. Whenever big or small, it is important that they are delivered no matter what the cost. However, there have been times when we have often worked ourselves a little too hard to keep these trains on time. And sometimes that could lead to trouble. I can remember one day when Ivy and Lily, the D9s, were both double-heading a heavy goods train full of steel. It was bound for Sodor, but the ship couldn't make it, so Ivy and Lily had been tasked to pull the train. Unfortunately, Ivy's age was starting to catch up to her, and she wasn't performing the best she could. Are you alright, sis? You seem more puffed out than usual. Don't worry about it, Lily. I'll be alright. Just needing a wee rest after this is all over. Further up the line, there is a steep gradient. This is between the tunnel, the junction, and the country station before the workshops. It isn't as steep as, for say, the Licky Incline or Gordon's Hill, but it's still tough enough for any engines to get stuck on it if they aren't careful. A banker's not really needed, but unless an engine's really struggling, then Victoria would often be called to help push them up the hill. And today, it seemed Ivy and Lily were going to need her. I can make it. I can make it. <sighs> Out. Are you all right, Ivy? I don't think so. <sighs> Everyone all right here, you two? We're all right here, Vicky darling. Well, I am at least. Don't know about Ivy though. Well, it's not good. The safety valve's burst and us valve gear looks worn out. 
The bloody miracle we stopped when we did. Otherwise, we would have been in a worse situation when we reached battle. Don't worry, sis. Let's get you to the workshops. Soon, sis. Thanks, Lily. Hope you can manage without me. Fortunately for Lily, she wouldn't have to wait long to find out. By the time she had returned later that evening, Mr. Russell had already made some arrangements. As we all know, Ivy had to go to the repair yard due to her incident earlier. So, in order for Lily to work her usual double-headed duties, she shall be paired up with the Lexus until Ivy returns. What? Ugh, customer kills him like this again. But sir, what about my other duties? I have divided them between Sans and Malcolm's timetables. What? But... This is ridiculous! That's enough of that, Alexis. You will do as you are told, understand? <sighs> yes, sir. That's what I thought. Now then, you all got some rest. There's loads of more work to do tomorrow. Slacker. What are you getting at calling me a slacker? You're so lazy that you can't handle your work without your precious sister. Pah, how pathetic. Oi, keep cool there, lass. You know full well how heavy goods trains can be during this time of year. Yes, Malcolm, but that doesn't deny the fact that she always relies on her sister to do most of the work with her. I hope you know, Alexis. Me and Ivy both work equally as a team together. Something you clearly wouldn't understand. At least I know what hard work is, instead of being dead weight. Dead weight? Like an insolent little irritating son of a- That's enough, you two! I can't believe you two out of all engines would be acting so childish to one another! You ignore what Alexis is saying, Lily. We all know that you work hard even without Ivy's help. As for you, Alexis, stop tormenting Lily already. She, as like the rest of us, would rather not hear your bullshit tonight. <sighs> Whatever, Eddie. And I've told you not to call me that. Tight, how can you call Lily a slacker when all you do is complain about being overworked when half the time you're sitting on your backside doing absolutely nothing? <sighs> Whatever, bossy boiler. Now if you excuse me, I'm going to sleep. morning, Lily had backed down onto another goods train. It wasn't as heavy as the one from yesterday, but she still needed a double head with Alexis. And just what do you 
think you're doing? Um, collecting our trucks? Not behind my tender, you're not. Move up. You're leading this train today. Huh? But this is how me and Ivy always do it. She leads, and I'm behind her. Well, that is not how it works today. Now move up so I can couple up. I'm gonna get turnaround. <sighs> I'm already regretting this. You're the one leading. Now get moving. I know. Okay, okay. Jeez, you need to show. Lily pounded hard to manage the train mainly on her own, but she managed just. Now, come on, there's other goods train to take. Shouldn't we... Shouldn't we get to take a drink and, and rest beforehand? Ah, we have plenty cold and water. And besides, rest is only for lazy engines. Now, come on. Bloody hell, she's such a stubborn engine. You are Lily. I was wondering where you went off. Oh, hey, Bernadette. Any for your thoughts? <sighs> it's Alexis. She's been making me do just about all the work into pulling the trains. But all she does is put extra weight behind my tender. She's always calling me lazy and she can't chance she can. I wish I could work with Ivy again and not her. Mm. Well, don't worry about it, lass. I've spoken to Alexis about the whole dilemma. But she's not going to learn with my words. She will just have to learn the old-fashioned way. Huh? What do you mean? We'll just have to wait for something to happen in order for her to learn things the hard way. And how unlucky that will be. Not much has happened lately to cause any delays lately. Let alone anything to pay someone out. Hey, you never know, Lily. It could be a lucky day tomorrow. Now then, how about I sleep with you here tonight? I can do with a rest without William and Malcolm arguing if the A4s or the Coronations were better at speed. Thanks, Aunt. Anytime, lass. Anytime. Oh, what the heck? Okay, I think so. What in the name of bagpipes just happened? 
I think I found the problem. How on earth did that get there? Never mind how I got there, Sam. I'm blocking the turntable and the water tower. Not only that, but you've also dented the water tower itself. Now it can't be used in case it topples over or starts leaking. Oh, fuck. Now what am I going to do? I haven't filled up on water. I don't know, Lily. I just have to manage till you find another water tower. Oh dear. I hope Alexis doesn't work me during this run. We've got another load of steel to take. I know there's one down in the workshops, but all I can say is... Pray and hope you can make it. You can leave today, just until we get the power. And so you can sit at the back being a lazy engine? No chance! I'm not having your sorry arse being dragged along behind me. Now get to the front of the train and you'll see what hard work is. Okay then. Okay. Take it easy, Lily. Just need to carry on the floor. It's not looking too good. You've been working so hard that your boiler is close to running bone dry. Oh no. Alexis, you sure we, we can't change places? Nah, come on, pick up the slack. Oh, alright then. Well, that's how on it all go. You ran out of water. Oh dear. I knew it wasn't going to be enough. Oi! What's the bloody hold up? I ran out of water. Well, maybe if you were an sensible engine, you would have filled up before we left the yard. This is why Lily is the better one of the two of you. You're too weak to work, even with another engine. Well, maybe if you didn't rush me, I could told you that the water tower was out of order and I was on water. You've been making me do all the work while you sit on your lazy ass doing nothing useful but being dead weight. How about you do something useful for once and get this train moving again? Looks like you'll be going to the front of the train then, Alexis. Get going or we'll be later than ever. Uh, right. Well, it seems that Lily can't do much to help, so it's up all to you, old girl. Alright, driver. Okay, here goes nothing. 
I guess. Well done, old girl! You did it! Yes, well done, Alexis. <sighs> Thank you, <sighs> everyone. Here, Lily. I wanted to say I'm sorry for calling you lazy. I should have watched what I said before. You never think before you speak, Alexis. Yeah, I know. But I promise to be a better lad from now on. That's good to hear. I forgive you, Alexis. Although, I'm not sure that uh, Mr. Russell will be forgiving as me. <laughs> oh, crap. Alexis had been given a tongue lashing from Mr. Russell and gave her what he thought would be a super punishment. She was to work with Ivy until she learned the true meaning of teamwork. Best to say, she didn't like this arrangement at all. Come on, Alexis, dearie. Put some effort into it. Come on, sure will. Oh, I'm trying. The train's so heavy. Well, you need to keep trying. Come on, up to it! One wheel turn after another! Come on here, move it! Move it! Move it! <laughs> that was so hard for sure. I certainly do think that Alexis did learn her lesson that day. As from that day onwards, there was no more talk about the lazy twin ever again. Whilst he is a hard worker, everybody appreciates the work he does, he, on the other hand, does it. He saw himself as being able to do more than just shunting coaches and trucks in the yards, and he would always try anything should the chance arise.
I just don't understand why I can't get full trains too. I don't care if it's trucks or coaches. I just want to see the rest of the railway. You're too important to transportation in the yard, Charles, my lad. Without you, there would be no one to arrange the trains on time. Besides, you're just jealous that your younger sister gets a branch line all to herself, whilst you're just stuck in the yard. <laughs> what? Jealous? I wouldn't be jealous of my own sister. You legit asked if we could swap drives for that exact reason last month. I... W w that, that... Oh, forget it. None of you understand what it's like as a station pilot. Now I'm going to sleep. Good night. Poor little fella. He just wants to be useful. William, he already is useful in the yard. He just doesn't accept his status on the railway, always having ideas above his station. He's more in denial of his position than what Thomas was back in 1924. And that's saying something. Well, I'm sure his chance to pull a train will happen soon. You're always optimistic with these kinds of things, aren't you, William? Of course I am. I'm always up... Uh, up to... up to... Holy spirit about everything. <laughs> well, whatever it is, I hope it's one that he can at least manage. Quite right, sis. Not too heavy, nor tedious for the wee lad. Fortunately, for Charles at least, his chance would come sooner than expected. So by the next morning, Everyone woke up to find the workmen crowding around me. Jeez, Sans, the heck's up with you? Uh, my bloody fire won't start and I can't even make steam. I need to go to the workshops and get checked out again. Well then, who's gonna take your morning train? Well, since everyone has work to do, I need another engine to take his morning train. Any volunteers? Oh, me, sir. Can I take it, sir? What? What the fuck? The yards are not overly busy in the early morning, so I can get back to my shunting before the rush hour traffic. Are you sure you're up for the task, Charles? I can manage, sir. Don't you worry. Very well, Charles. You can take Black Adder's morning train. Oh, thank you, sir. I will not let you down. That's a good edge. Your first job is to collect the train load of ballast and deliver it to Victoria's branch line. Yes, sir. You can count on me, sir. Excellent. As for the rest of you, no more duties as usual. Good day, everyone. Aha! At long last, the shunter finally gets to put a train. What? Don't I get a chorus of cheers and whistles? You weren't gonna get one regardless. Well, we are glad you got your chance, Charles. But all we can say is- Don't cause any accidents with the trucks, alright? Pah! They're just simple trucks, right? No harm in them for me. I know all about trucks. I'll show you. I'll show you all. Yes, but ballast trucks are not like any ordinary truck. And he's gone. Oh, so, how much you want to bet you'll get into an accident? I'll give him five minutes. That's surprisingly generous, even for you, Malcolm. Yeah, I know. He wouldn't be able to last five seconds, let alone five minutes. <laughs> this is no laughing matter, Malcolm. You and I both know how difficult ballast trucks can be to handle. They'll try anything to cause an accident with Charles if he doesn't handle them correctly. Lucky is right. Something's bound to go wrong with Charles acts like a moron. Don't ever call me that again, William. Let's just hope it doesn't come to anything like that, William. Unfortunately, something would go wrong.
solar trucks can be bad for many. Power trucks also could be worse for the lot. Charles had no idea what he was going up against. Oh, be quiet back there, you lot. I want no trickery towards me. Understand? I am your engine, and you will do as I say. Who does this big green grape think she's doing? Barging orders at us? This is Blackadder's job, not this baboon's. Hey, lads, I've got an idea. How about we give our newcomer a warm reception, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Let's welcome our new pal with the usual routine, boy. <laughs> Charles, what are you doing here? Blackadder's having steaming problems, so I'm taking this train. Again? That's like the fifth time this month. I thought he'd go to the workshop for repairs. He always says he'll be fine after a wee rest. Not even the workman can find the problem. He must be hiding something then. But back to my original question. Why did they send you out of all engines? I volunteered as there's not a lot of trains in the early morning hours, so manager allowed me to take it. You do know how to handle ballast trucks, right? Why is everyone always asking me if I can handle them? Of course I can. They're just trucks after all. <coughs> Honestly, some engines. Good luck, Charles. You're gonna bloody need it. At first, the trucks behaved well. They came on all the fires and that Charles thought he had under control. some tea in my flask in the van. We can use some of that to cool down the axle box. Good thinking, Rick. Now quickly now, or we're gonna be late. There we are. Let's be quick now. All right, here we go again. Hopefully that's the last of the tricks. Crap, crap! Help! Bash him! Bump him! Throw him off the rails! Someone help me! I can't stop! Oh 
Child! Help! Like, look out! Oh dear, are you alright? Yes, I'm fine. Probably. Stay there, I'll go get help. That's all I can do! Me. Charles, what happened? I, uh, may have lost control. Let me guess. You ignored anyone else who would give you advice other than me and Malcolm, and you didn't treat the trucks properly like you should have. So they decided to pull the good old classic trick of pushing you down the gradient and then making you crash into this diesel's train, causing you to fall into this field. Am I correct? Um, yes. Yes, it is. Well, no matter what caused this, we need to get this whole mess cleaned up. What about my goods? I'm not sure Control will be pleased about this. I'm sure Mr. Russell can make some arrangements with your Shedmaster about this. Right now, you can take your unhurt trucks with you. It's only just a few miles to the harbor from here. I'm sure if we can reveal your brake van, you'll be alright. Head office already knows what's happened, so they'll understand the issue. <laughs> I swear, sometimes I wonder if you should go into politics, Blackadder. It ain't the first accident I've had to clear up, Alexis, dear. Now let's get the crane into position, lads. Come on, move it, jump it now! Charles. Huh? Oh, uh, good afternoon, sir. D what a wonderful day we're having. <laughs> it would be, Charles, yes. <laughs> the others told you about how I was acting before the accident, didn't they? Mostly Blackadder, but yes. Sir, I can explain everything. Charles, listen. The accident wasn't entirely your fault. Oh, phew, thank goodness for that. Thought I was going to get in trouble. Wait, what do you mean by not entirely? Whilst the accident alone wasn't your fault, it could have still been avoided if you had just listened to those who gave you advice on how to handle them. I thought I could trust you. Yes, sir. S sorry, sir. You have a lot to learn about ballast trucks. Once you're repaired, you're to be put on ballast to run to Santa Malcolm until you learn how to handle the trucks properly. Maybe that will teach you to always ask for help whenever needed. Yes, sir. I will, sir. Eventually, a few days later, Charles returned back into service. He was doing double hitting ballast runs with me and Malcolm until he learned how to handle them properly. At first, he was a bit persistent about it. But he soon eventually got the hang of it. He did so well, in fact, that Mr. Russell proposed for him to take the ballast rings more often. However, Charles declined the offer, as he realizes that pulling trains isn't really exactly his forte. 
He came to the conclusion that his skills were prioritized to him being the nation pilot and not being stationed. After all, what would our Yarden father do without Charles, the great western pannier tank? On a dark, clear night when the moon shines above and the owls hoot into the night, you may often see the night trains roaming around the Great Scottish Railway. There are three different jobs that run at night. There's first a postal train that stops at almost every station. Whilst we own the service, the whole timetable of it is decided by Royal Mail themselves. Whenever this job is taken, a special request has to be made to drop off one of the vans at Victoria's branch line. The second job is a passenger service. This is for people who have been working very late into the night and had to make their last trip home. It's a local service, so that means it stops at every station. And finally, there's a goods train that runs from the harbour all the way to Barrow. Usually, everything runs like clockwork. But one night, Lily was being delayed at the harbour. There was meant to be an extra shipment of fish, but the fishing boats hadn't arrived yet. Where is Ten Cents with those fishermen? I hope everything's alright. Don't worry, old girl. I'm sure Ten Cents knows what he's doing, even in this fog. I know, Mike. It's just this fog can cause problems with either work or communication. Sorry about that, Lily. The radio signal got lost when we reached the lighthouse. Not even the North Star was much help in this blasted fog. Well, at least you got it. That's what matters. I'll just have to make up for lost time. Do be careful, Lily. The fog's causing problems all across the west coast. So just be careful passing the twin viaducts. Thanks for the warning, Ten Cents. I'll be as safe as I can. Whoa, Ten Cents was right. This fog really is terrible. I can barely see a thing. What was that? Oh, this is just now. Oh, of course. <laughs> okay. That was no owl. What? What? What's that? Ah! Get away, you thing!
What? What's that? I don't know, old girl. The fog was too thick for any of us to see who it was, let alone if it was an engine. Let's just continue with our work, and then we can, and then we'll let you have a nice long rest in the sheds. Maybe then we can forget about what just happened. Uh, all right. Oh, sorry Lily, didn't mean to scare you there. Jeez, girl, what's got you all jumpy? What? Oh, no, nothing, Alexis. Just that, uh, uh... Come on, Lily, darling. You can tell me. Well, last night, I feel like I, I saw a, a ghost last night. <laughs> a ghost? <laughs> oh, you crack me up, Lily. But it's true. It was a tank engine. All in black, and it didn't say a word as it passed me. My dear Lily, you must have been seeing things in the fog last night. The fog plays on an engine's mind. There's no such thing as ghosts. Just because you haven't seen them, Alexis, doesn't mean they don't exist. What did you say the engine looked like? Black all over. I never said a word as it rushed past. Any identification of number nor name? It was hard to figure it out in the fog, but I feel like it looked like an L B S E R E two, but different. So you saw it then? Saw what? The ghost of Engine 17. He was a tank engine that used to work at the yards of Houston. He saw himself as one of a kind, as he was the only one of his design built. Unfortunately, he was a bad steamer and the LMS decided it would best not to base them the design of him and offered for the Jinties as their shunters. He soon became very lazy and often tried to escape the yards to the main line. But the drivers always stopped him before he reached the junction points. But one night, during the Second World War, he'd managed to escape to the main line. Unfortunately, right in front of the line of a post train, The engine was soon swiftly scrapped, as the LMS didn't want to do anything for him. It is said that, to this day, he still roams the rails, willing to strike fear into any engine that it comes across, as a warning to not make the same mistake he did. You seriously expecting me to believe that? Bah! Never thought you'd be one for ghost stories, Sans. Suit yourself, Alexis, but be on your guard. You never know what's out there. Whatever. Is the story true, Sans? Most of the story is, Lily, yes. But since there were only a few unconfirmed sightings of him, nobody really knows if his ghost really does exist. It's just what people used to give others a good scare is all. Then, what did I see last night? Silly Lily, silly Sands, silly ghosts. Those two must be going soft in the boiler. There's no such thing as ghosts. It's just a stupid story.
the stupid bird. Odd. How come shouldn't be back yet? Who's there? Down, girl! Honestly, it's like you just saw a go- Finish that sentence, driver, and I'll wish out of all of you! Alright, alright! Goodness, what's gotten into you? Ah, look. Well, could you not weigh it carefully, if that makes you feel better? Uh, I suppose. What's wrong, Alexis? You look like you saw a ghost. No, 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 of course not. Are you sure about that, dearie? After all, like you said, there's no such thing as ghosts. Yes, yes, it's all fine. Oh no, please come back to get me. Oh no, please don't want anyone help. Get back, you horrid thing. Needs a bit of loot loss. Huh? The back still, Alexis, then. It's only me. H who are you? <laughs> this is your engine 17, Alexis. <laughs> May I introduce you to Lachlan? He's a newcomer to the railway. He's been trialed here for a few months. He was only been working at the workshops, but now he's been helping me with maintenance on the main line. Hey, I'm sorry I scared you last night, no hen. 
I was doing some late night maintenance runs, taking some wagons over to Victoria's branch line. But that's my last night doing that, as all the b supplies have been delivered. So you won't think you're seeing Engine 17 at night again. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis, however, couldn't see the funny side of it. She thought it would be a good idea not to underestimate the superstition. Oh, 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 oh my boy! <laughs> oh my cheeks! <laughs> oh, I <laughs> enjoy your run, Alexis. <laughs> Also to make sure she keeps her rude comments to herself, because she won't know when they might bite back. On any railway, there is always one job that is the most important to keep trains running, and that is maintenance. Making sure all tracks and structures along the line were up to the current health and safety guidelines in order to run trains properly. Not many engines liked doing this job, as most of it was just sitting around doing nothing in the middle of the main line. However, there are some engines that do enjoy this type of work. Before Lachlan became the pilot at the workshops, I was the only engine who was taking the maintenance gang out whenever they were needed. But after his trials, Lachlan had been offered to assist helping me with the maintenance gang too. He and I enjoyed this job very much, whenever either we were working solo, or we were working together as a team. It's all in a day's work to keep the line running, I would say. Even better than being derailed or stuck in the yards all day, every day. However, there was one in who wasn't so polite about it. Afternoon, Malcolm. Oh no. I know that look. What's bothering you now? It's that bloody Lachlan. He made me late with my return goods. But Lachlan's not the type to just delay trains. How exactly did he make you late? He and the plate layers were blocking my path and spending the track near Lock Valley. That? That was your problem? Really? It's more than that, you great western nitwit! The problem was they were doing it so slowly! I had to end up changing onto the other line, which meant going back to the twin viaducts and exchanging with the signal meant to get me onto the other line just to pass by there. Alright, Malcolm, we get it! Jesus Christ, will you shut up already? We don't need to hear your constant moaning and groaning. Ah, that's the pot calling the kettle black if I've ever heard it, Alexis, dear. You're not any better with your grip on passengers or trucks' tricks. Alright, that's enough, you two! Jeez, you sound like you're arguing about a football team and a pub steaming drunk! Oh, thank God. A voice of reason. 
Come on, Malcolm. You know Lachlan's just doing his job. Yes, Will, but it would be nice for him not to get in the way of my bloody work for once. I like being on time. You know this. Uh, yeah, um, it's as annoying as your voice, you arsy prick. What was that? Oh, nothing. That's enough from you, Alexis. Now hurry off now and collect your next train. Uh, fine. Oh, right. I forgot about that. If you remember from the first story, you may recall me mentioning that Malkin can be quite the perfectionist. Recently, Lachlan had been doing more maintenance work on the line than ever, and whenever he was on the line, Malcolm would always be delayed, and none too pleased about it. Lachlan, of course, much like everyone else, just ignored him. station, but he had to be extra careful because of the weather. Oh, I didn't they like this crappy weather. It'll be terrible for maintenance when the old day is done. That's no good. What's wrong, lad? That tree's a wee bit too close to the line, don't you think? Aye, it does right enough. Better let the landside clues to come and inspect that. We well, can't come out the new. We better lock control at Kamarnik about this. Good idea. We'll head to the junction and form them there. Aye, and we can probably take shelter whilst the storm passes. Attention engines! Lachlan's driver just informed me of a tree too close to the line. Please be careful when passing through the north entrance. The landslide gang will sort out the problem once the wind dies down. Oh, great! Now I'm going to be laid by his predictions! It's better to listen to said predictions instead of being reckless in this weather, Malcolm. Still doesn't help me from trying to get my train on time for once. Just you wait. <sighs> Charles, get the crane ready. Um, why? What for? Well, if my assumptions are correct, someone's going to need a clean-up on line 1 and 2. Come on! Come on! I want to be on time! Whoa! Slow down, boy! The sooner we get this train on time, the better! Now, come on! What the? Oi! Hey, 
Look at him! Look at him! Oh no! I am not about to let you delay me again! Manager, inform controller Mr. Russell that there's been an accident outside the Riverside Tunnel. Vicky, you stay here. I'm gonna go check see what's happened. All right, but be careful out there. Then there will, lass. I'll be careful. Welcome. Ouch. I think so. Then they flash yourself. Help is on the way. Jeremy and Malcolm, how did this happen? A tree fell onto the line outside tunnel entrance. I couldn't stop in time. Hang on a moment. Weren't we told about a tree being too close to the line? Hey, but it seems that Malcolm here is the danger to the tree instead of the other way round. Oh, I'm sorry, Lachlan. I should have listened. I was running late and I just wanted to be on Barrow on time. I should have been careful. And so you should have. Huh? Sir? Where did you come from? Ahem. Uh -huh. Oh. Right. I hope not. Um, this incident has taught you a lesson in railway safety. Yes, sir. <laughs> Malcolm was a much more patient engine from that day onwards. He never rushed his work whenever there was a warning being called out. And always whistled a friendly hello to Lachlan and the workmen as he passed by. And though his perfectionist side may return, he is proud to call Lachlan a very helpful and dear
Now, Victoria's branch line isn't a big branch line, but it's still quite popular with the locals. Every day she puffs up and down with her two coaches, making sure everyone gets to their destinations on time. Coaches were always loaded with passengers, and she was always busy. But since it was a small branch line, Mr. Russell had decided for some special volunteering courses to be taking place. Some helped clean the stations and handle duties with the guard, whilst others were allowed to ride in Victoria's cab as either trainee driver or fireman. However, her original crew would always be there just to make sure that nothing goes wrong. But one day when Victoria was waiting at the junction, she found out that one of the voluntary drivers had to take over her regular driver, due to him being sick. Alright, Freddy. You remember what my driver taught you, right? Yes, Victoria. I remember. Use the regulator to apply more steam to go faster. Use brakes gently. Whistle at signal boxes and whistle boards. Use reverser to change direction. And don't forget to shut on the handbrake when I have to. I'm sure we'll be fine. I know it's just your first time doing this without my driver. Well, whatever happens, I've got you and Jake to keep me checked. I'd best go get ready before we start. Best be careful, old girl. He may know the knowledge on what to do, but it takes a lot of practice to become a proper driver, especially for a steam engine. I'm sure everything will run smoothly, Jay. Besides, his heart's in the right place. Yeah, let's just hope his brain is. Morning, Ricky Deary. And how's Freddy settling in? He's a quick learner for one thing. I just hope he can pull it off easily without my driver. I'm sure he'll manage just fine. Besides, you and Jake can keep him in check if ever needed. Yeah, you're right, girl. I'm probably just being paranoid. Oh, that's my card's whistle. Best be off. Bye, Ivy. See you later, Vicky darling. Now, for all his good intentions, Freddy can be a bit forgetful at times. Sometimes he'd forget to put the brakes on at the right time. Other times, he'd forget when the train was due to leave. Just down there by the door, lad. Freddy! Come on! We should have left by now! Oh, bugger. Sorry, Phil. Gotta go. Nah, it's fine, boy. Just you go attend to the train. Despite these minor hiccups, Freddy was doing well. However, his forgetfulness would soon lend him into trouble.
Victoria was at the top station, ready for the return journey. As the firemen joined the guard in the station cafe, Freddy went to attach the coaches to Victoria. Unfortunately, he had forgot to set Victoria's handbrake on properly. Once he had finished coupling her up, he joined the fireman and the guard in the station. Then, it happened. Huh, that's odd. The passengers haven't boarded yet. What's going on, driver? Here, you lads hear something? Oh no, Victoria! Call the junction, Matthew, quickly! We'll have to stop her in our other way sightings. Victoria was now thundering down the branch line as fast as she could. She tried to stop. But she couldn't without her driver and fireman. She tried to whistle a warning, but she couldn't do that either. She just ran down the line uncontrollably, with her coaches in tow. me bagpipes! Ow! Oh, thank goodness! Stop that man! Are you alright, Victoria? I think so. Whoa, what happened? Never mind that, William. Tell Charles to come down here with the crane as fast as you can. Oh, uh, right. Don't worry, Vicky dear. Help is on the way. Wish I could help, but I'm a guaranteed connection with Rebecca today. You'll be all right. Don't worry, sis. You'll be alright once we take you to the workshops. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate it. Oh, thank God. Victoria, are you alright? Yes, Freddy, I'm fine. What I want to know is how you started moving. Well, upon closer inspection, it seems her handbrake was never set properly and it released itself, which caused Victoria to start moving uncontrollably down the line. But who would be dumb enough to leave the handbrake loose? Um, that might have been my fault. I kinda rushed in sorting the controls so I could catch up with the station master at the top station. I'm sorry. And so you should be. Whilst you are to be blamed for this, 
You firemen should have still been there to see if he had done it correctly. He's still in training after all. Yes, sir. My apologies, sir. As for you, Victoria... Oh, it's off to the works for you. Now I need to find another engine to run the branch till you get back. I would be happy to, sir. Your work in the yard is important right now, Charles. I cannot have you out of the yard with the busy summer season coming. I would, but I'm neither doing in the workshops. Hmm, yes, you're right, Lachlan. Eh, uh, well, what about that new engine, sir? Isn't the engine arriving tomorrow? Yes, and he's far too heavy to go on the branch. Unless... Hmm, yes, that could work. Excuse me, entrance, but I must return to my office at once. Charles, help Lachlan take Victoria and her coaches away to the workshops, please. Of course, sir. That's a good engine. I'll be off now. Good day, everyone. I'm sorry, Victoria, for causing the accident. It's quite all right, Freddy. You're still learning, after all. I'm sorry for not being there if you checked it properly. You have been splendid these past few days. You think so? Indeed. I bet you'll get your chance as a full-time driver. We'll just need to remind you of our hand rips. <laughs> 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 Freddy did eventually become a railway driver, and is still a member of the railway to this day. And with that, everything was alright once again. But you're probably wondering, who was that engine they were talking about? Well, I mustn't say more, as I shall spoil the last story. Good evening, Entrants. As some of you may know, there was an accident at the junction with Victoria and her coaches. Freddy, one of our volunteers, hadn't set the handbrake properly. She was thankfully stopped, but due to said stop, she'll have to go to the works to be mended. In the meantime, I want Alexis in charge of the branch until she returns. Yes, sir. What about my duties on the main line? That is where I'm getting at. Tomorrow we are getting another engine to help with the increased workload. He will have his trial on Alexis's trains. Should he succeed in his trials, I shall make a timetable for him and accept him as a member of our railway. When he arrives, I want you all to give him a warm welcome. You can count on us, sir! Splendid. I best be off. Hang on, sir. Quick question. Yes, Charles? What's the engine's name? I was told he didn't have a name. Just a number. Oh, I see. Very well, sir. We will give this engine a warm reception. Like how the ballast trucks give you a warm reception? <laughs> oh, shut up, William! <laughs> Alright, if that is all, I bid you all a good night. No name, only a number. Where have I heard that before? Hmm. You are right, sir. Huh? Yeah, I'm alright. Just pondering over something. That's all. Pondering over what? Ugh, it's nothing. 
Let's just get some sleep. Good night, guys. Good night. Morning after Mr. Russell's announcement, the engines woke up to find that I wasn't in my berth. Where's that? He took a goods train last night. I thought you were scheduled to take it. I was, until my fire decided to not cooperate with the firelighter. Only now I've been able to steam properly. So guess who's taking Sands' morning passenger train while he takes my return goods? Uh, you? Yes, William. Me. Tish. And they say the wrong ones are the stupid ones. I best be off to collect his train before my fire decides to go to sleep again. Be careful with them coaches now, you hear? Don't want to run past the station again. <laughs> Well, that wasn't very nice. Later, Malcolm had collected the coaches and was waiting at the platform. He had gained a lot more experience with pulling passengers over the past year and was allowed to take the local trains more often whenever the others weren't available. He was just resting at the platform ready to start when suddenly... Huh? Who's that? Can't be Anna. He's not due back for another hour. Hello there. Is this the GSR's preservation line? Yes, indeed. The name's Malcolm. Who might you be? Oh, well, I don't have a name. Just a number. Oh, yeah. I forgot our manager told us about that. Well, what's your number? Well, my number is 87546. Well, 87546. It's a pleasure meeting you. Likewise, Malcolm. Now could you please tell me where the sheds are? Just down the track there.
There's a set of points further up that you need to go right on. You'll find the sheds and a turntable next to it. Mr. Russell will be waiting for you there, I believe. Oh, that's my guard's whistle. I'll catch you later, mate. Take care. there, Malcolm. How's things on your line? Good morning, mate. Our contract with BR about letting us run on their main line still active, so we're still very busy, and we got ourselves a new engine this morning. Oh, really? What's the engine's name? Oh, well, he doesn't have a name. Only a number. No name? Why is that? He never said. But he did say his number was 87546. What?! <laughs> Tell me I did not just hear that! I'm afraid you did, Gordon. What are you two on about? My dear Malcolm, 87546 was a menace to our railway. He was one of the few loaned engines the Fat Director sent packing for terrible actions against the railway. Really? Blimey! I never knew that! Did he have a name back then? Well, he did. He was called Croven. That was nullified after an incident he caused with his so-called PAL 9462, better known as Alfred. Though Alfred was the more mature one afterwards, Croven wasn't. But nobody had the biggest grudge on him than Sands did. They were both sworn enemies, mainly to what Croven did to poor Henry. What did he do? Meanwhile, 87546 was busy shunting with Ivy and Lily at the harbour. So when were you saved from scrap? Back in 1964, I was in a scrap siding in Birmingham before being bought by a few enthusiasts that were willing to restore me. Only took until a few months ago when my overhauls were complete. It took them a while to find me a new home so I could be useful again. That's how I came here. Well, why not so? The Northwestern Whaley always welcomed new engines. Well, yeah, about that. I told the men not to phone them, just in case, um. In case of what? I heard you were with the new engine! Oh no... Okay, here I go! By the boat dock! Ah, there you two are! I just came over to create the new engine before my next trip. Oh, where are our men? Sands, this is... 87546. Oh, so you know who he is then? You two met before? You could say that. One might say we were both very well acquainted in the past. Look, Sands, I don't want to be any trouble here and... You're already causing trouble just by being here. I'm not letting you do the same thing here as you did on Sodor. You do one wrong move and you're done. Sands, what do you want about? Sands, what are you doing? Don't be rude to the new engine! Whatever. Just stay out of my way, or you'll regret coming here. I've got another passenger train to take. Good day to you all. You're 
all right, eight, seven, five, four, six. Yeah, sorry you had to see that. I've never seen Sans so mad over something like whatever that was. Well, I best head off to work then. I have a train to take to the Lock Valley. I'll go with you if that's all right, sis. Go ahead, Lily. I'm not due on a train for a few hours, so I can help if you need it, Ivy. Thank you, Malcolm. Much appreciated. Bloody hell, out of all engines in the world, why him? Though, maybe I did go overkill on them earlier. I mean, everyone is capable of change. Right? Look, what am I saying? If he didn't change his ways before, what makes me think he could change now? Ugh. Ugh. I shouldn't dwell on it, though. I need to get some sleep. I feel like complete crap. Evening, everyone. What's with the long faces? We want to know why you were so rude to 87546. We may have seen you been mad at others before, but not like that. <sighs> I guess I can't keep it a secret forever. Alright, I'll tell you what happened. Long time ago, back in 1921, before I was learned to the Northwestern Railway, the fat director had purchased three other engines on loan, each from different railways. A red mogul prototype named Eagle, and the other two were an LNER B12 and an LBS CK class. They were known as Alfred and Proven. Or known by their numbers as 98462 and 87546. Both were very proud of their own railways and saw themselves as very high class engines, much compared to, as they put it, the lower class of the railway. They always treated their resident engines with the lowest of respect. The one they particularly liked to pick on was Henry. Since this was back in his old shape, it was easy to tease the poor engine because of his steaming troubles. The two engines always tried their hardest to be better than everyone, and they seemed to manage it pretty well. However, there was only one engine Croven couldn't get better at.
since I was a very strong and quick thinking engine, I was able to outshine Crowvin easily. I'm sorry to say, this meant we didn't get along well. Then, Gordon arrived. He and Alfred spoke a lot as they were both members of the LNER, and very quickly saw each other as equal allies. Crovin, however, began to feel left out, and felt like he was abandoned by Alfred. He wanted to try and make himself as good as both Gordon and Alfred. Often enough, he would try and overtake the speed limit, see how fast he could go. Unfortunately, he was rather reckless in such an act. getting so reckless that the fat director decided to take him off passenger duties and put him ahead of goods work instead. This only made his friendship with Alfred weaken even more. Unfortunately, there was a day where this went too far. Crovin was taking a good train out to the harbour and leaving the big station quickly. He was already running early, which caused trouble for signalling. director heard about this, he was very cross. He had been wanting to punish Alfred and Croven for quite some time, but now was the perfect time to do it. He decided that their punishment was to be removed from the express to be left for Gordon to be the only engine to pull it. Not only that, but their names were also nullified and were only referred to by their numbers instead.
Over time, we all saw a change in Alfred. He became a much more nicer engine from that day onwards, and treated the other engines with much more respect. Eight seven five four six, however, was quite the opposite. One day, he noticed that Gordon was being teased in the yard by Thomas, Edward and Henry, due to the incident he had on the hill that day. A7546 saw this as his chance to get on Gordon's good side, but what he did was despicable. He told Henry a false story. which led to the big green engine's infamous running into the tunnel. And being bricked up. One day, a few weeks after he had been bricked up in the tunnel, I came to see him. He told me about why he did it and who made him act like this. I was furious. And that night, I had a very strong word for 87546. If I had it my way, you would have been sent away packing for what you've done to poor Henry. But since the fact director doesn't know, and it'd be best that he doesn't, I will keep my mouth shut about it. But if you try anything stupid, anything at all to anyone else on this island, I will change my mind. Don't make me change my mind, as you know full well what I'm capable of. You do not want to mess with the Scots. He was in Raged by it all when I had left, thinking that I pulled him up for framing him, as he would have put it. But he did keep his mouth shut about it. Then, 1925 rolled round, and it was not long after Thomas had been giving his branch line that the fat director decided on who was to stay and who was to leave. Alfred and Croven were to be sent home back to their railways, 
whilst me and Eagle were meant to be purchased as two of the newest crews of the North Western Railway. Unfortunately, 87546 was not pleased. He thought that he was the one that should stay, and not me. following morning, he decided to make up a plan. started pretending that he was feeling ill, and began to slow down as he was approaching the crossover. His driver and fireman tried everything to keep him moving, but no matter what they did, Proven wooden speed up and came to a stop, blocking the crossover. Proven had thought he had planned this perfectly, but he couldn't have been more wrong. Driver, stop now! We were all sent to the works after the accident. Eagle, unfortunately, had been knocked out in the impact and had suffered a bad coma, of which he stayed in for five years. Alfred, thankfully, wasn't badly damaged, and he was able to move all on his own steam. 
I unfortunately needed to get some repairs on my railway. And I later find out that I would never return back to the Northwestern. Crovin was badly damaged, given that he had been ran into from front and behind from all three of us. When the fat director heard about it, he was livid. And he personally said, and I'm not joking when I say it, that he was to send Crovin away, not to be repaired, left in bits, and then he would let his own railway decide what to do with him. I hope you're happy with yourself now, 87546. Because of you, the fat director's back at square one. This railway's probably gonna have a lot of financial problems because of this. You're lucky none of us were pulling a passenger train. Because if we were, the situation would have been a whole lot more worse, and it would all be on your buffers. I hope. It's not the last time we'd see each other. Because if I ever saw you again, I'd make sure that you would burn in the deepest part of hell for all the sins you've committed. Goodbye, Crippen. That was the last time I ever saw him. And to this day, I'd promised myself to never, ever see that horrid engine again. As I'd fear what he might do to the next sorry engine that encounters him. That's the story. Are you happy now? Well, we all understand your anger towards him, Sands. But haven't you realized it's been decades since then? Surely that's more than enough time for 87546 to learn his lesson. If he never learned sense on Sodor, then why should he now? This conversation shall cease until further notice. I need to go and sleep. I have an early good strain in the morning. Good night. This can't go on like this. We should all be like a family, not mortal enemies. William's right. Something must be done about this. Wait, William's right? But what do we do about it? I guess we will have to wait and see what happens. Maybe some miracle will happen that will solve our problems.
Are you all right, Sands? Huh? You look a bit worse for wear there. I can find Charles. I just need a good run is all. Where's this lot heading? Barrow. The Rediesel will be collecting it and taking it to Manchester. Are you sure you don't need help? Don't worry. I'll manage. Hopefully. You can do this. You can make it. I struggled on mile after mile, station after station. Since it was a non-stop goods, I had to maintain a decent speed. However, keeping to the speed limit was quite an issue. Then, it all seemed to get worse when I was approaching Lock Valley. Ow! Driver! I've got such a pain! Oh, I've got such a pain! Your boiler pressure's going up badly! We'd better stop before- Ah! Fuck! Oh. 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 No, stop! 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 Oh. Oh, that's torn it. Oh, we're stuck here. Go get help. I'm on it. And you, Sam, duck down this fire quickly. We can't let anything else go wrong. What's going on here? It's Blackadder. He's broken down and stuck on the main line near Lock Valley. Could you go help push him to Barrow, please? Oh God, is he okay? Not sure, but you better go help quickly. I'll help him the best I can, sir. Good, now get going before the express gets delayed by this. Are you alright, Sans? His safety valve burst as he was dangerously low in water. His hose pipe on the tender must be leaking. Thank God we stopped when we did. Right. Come on, Sans. Let's get moving. Are you sure about this 87546? You won't be able to manage your train, as well as mine, all by yourself! 
We'll see about that. I will do it. Gordon bloody Bennett, he's doing it. To go rest, and I'll take the trucks away. That would be helpful. Thanks. Cheers, mate. Well, thank you for helping me, 87546. But, why did you save me? After I was so rude to you, and especially after all these years. It was an important job, after all. I had to help. After all, I couldn't let the Diesel take half the goods. What do you mean by that? I noticed in your face yesterday that you were looking unwell. So, to keep you from breaking down too badly, I asked Charles to give me the other half of the trucks. I didn't realize how bad you were. Ah, there was nothing. I just felt a bit out of breath is all. Nothing too serious. Well, thank you for the help. I guess you really have changed after all. I suppose we should start again and put the past behind us. What do you say, Blackadder? I'd say that's a good idea. Welcome to the railway, Froven. And just like that, our rivalry had finally concluded. We were both sent to the works to be looked over, and for my worn parts to be repaired. I was swiftly brought back into regular service again. I didn't have that much trouble steaming now, as along with my safety valve, many of my old parts had been replaced, and now I felt brand new as ever. Conveniently, Victoria's repairs were soon quickly done right after me, and she was back pulling her coaches on her branch line again. She had been given a brand new coat of the BR livery, and she much preferred this compared to her old one, since it had much better lining. Ah, 
As for 87546, he was given a brand new livery of his choice. As well as big brass nameplates on his smoke box, which read in broad letters, Croven. He is now an official member of our railway, and has made friends with everyone. He even made amends with those on Sodor, whenever he got the chance to see them at Barrow. And just like me, the other engines accepted his apology. Proven is now a changed engine, and is happy to be working alongside engines like us. But most of all, he is happy to be good friends with me once and for all. And that, everyone, is how our story ends. There are loads of other tales I'd love to tell you about our railway as it grew over the years. But until then, this is where we depart. For now. Goodbye, lads and lassies.